Hey, this is your girl, Sharon K. Griffin, a.k.a. Madam Butterfly. Hello, 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 everyone. I hope that you had a phenomenal Thanksgiving. I have not been back here since my virtual book release. Let me tell you, I have been so freaking tired. No energy. Cycle came on. And I just needed some time to rest and recuperate. But I wanted to say, if you haven't got 134 reasons you can't find the man, trust me, you are missing out. Why? You are missing out because that book is not just a book, but it's a journal to guide you on self-love, self-healing, reflection, and doing the damn thing, whether it's getting married, staying single, healing, finding hope, whatever it is, the book is for you. Trust me. And I wrote it particularly just like that because I wanted to see people heal and whole. But on today, it's not all about me. Last Friday it was, yes. Um, I have a beautiful young lady on here. Her name is Nia. Now, I had to ask her about the pronunciation of her name because she spells Nia, N-I-A, like Nia Long, um, and she's just as beautiful. However, I can't pronounce her last name, so I'm not going to do it any injustice, and we're going to allow her to do it justice, okay? So I am introducing Miss Nia from 2004 Olympics. Taekwondo winner. Okay, I'm not good at saying that. It's okay. Charge it to the game. But here she is, my beautiful guest on today. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. 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 I'm wonderful. How are you? I am amazing. Um, I know, right? And you, <laughs> you got on red, and I have on red, white, and blue because I wanted to celebrate you. Yes, and I like that you have mostly blue because Athens color uh, was blue. So, as you can see, really, yeah. See, this is the logo right here. Okay, okay. So we thank God for that. So, okay, I couldn't pronounce your last name. So, could you please help me out because I didn't want to sound like an idiot. So, my name is Nia Abdallah. But uh, fun fact, uh, I asked my stepfather to adopt me, uh, not this Father's Day, but the Father's Day before. So now I hyphenated. And so now my name is Nia Abdallah slash Duhart. Newhart. Duhart. Duhart. See, mm -hmm. I could have said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I have I carry both of my father's names now. Oh, uh, I think that's beautiful. So, all right. I couldn't pronounce Taekwondo, but I got it this time. But how did you get into Taekwondo? A black woman or a black young 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 girl in Taekwondo? What happened? So there's oh. two parts of that, that uh, story. The first part is how I wanted to be an Olympian because I wouldn't have gotten into Taekwondo if it wasn't for that. Um, and so okay. when I was four years old, my uh, grandfather kind of sat me down. He was big in the Olympics. He loved the Olympics. Um, and he sat down and told me about the Olympics. Um, and what stood out for me was that um, he told me about in the beginning, like it was a way for the country of Greece to stop all war and just play sports. And like I was all like, that's so at four years old, I felt how powerful that was of like, wow. we're not gonna fight anymore. We're just gonna play sports. So I fell in love with the the idea. And at four years old, I told my mom I wanted to win the Olympics. Um the reason wow. I saw it, yeah, four years old, I told my mom, I saw it four years old. Like I was on the podium at four. Like I it was, okay. it was a matter of if it was a matter of when. So me. I have to ask you, do you believe that you had insight and that you spoke it into existence? Like, what are your thoughts now? Because you actually did speak it into existence. So I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think that it that is actually, discernment is actually one of my gifts, my spiritual gifts. Um, okay. So I've seen other things that's in the future. And I'm, I am a dreamer by heart. That's something that I got from my biological father. Um, I naturally see... I see us going to the sun. Okay. Well, other people see us going to the moon. I just do. I do that with everything. I've gotten into jobs. I'm entry level. And I said, in a year, I'm going to be a manager. And people are like, you're not going to be a wow. manager. And in like 10 months, I'll become a manager. Like that, that's been the case. I love it. Like that's just, that's I, just how I am. 
Now, do people think you're weird? Because I know when people have the gift of insight and intuition and things like that, a lot of times people are afraid to hang around you because you might know some things about them. So how uh, does that work in your world? I actually, I get the opposite. I get people that that don't know me that want to be around me. Um, for one, I've been told that I give off a specific energy. Um, okay. And I'm about the energies that I give and take, but I'm super sensitive to the energies in the room. Um, and okay. so um, I, I used to didn't know how to control that because what I would do is I would feel the negative energy, but I would bring, like I would soak it up and, and put out positive energy so other people would feel good. But I okay. didn't, but I felt bad. And so I've learned in the last maybe six years um, how to be able to give people energy um, and exchange it better than me just being drained. Um, but I I love that. that's a spiritual gift that I have. Like, I can't say that I do anything purposeful or, or like, yeah, I'm just a good person. That's just something God gave me um, to be able okay. to come in the room and, and be able to have that energy um, and feel those energies. I'm super sensitive to energies. I mean, I sage my house. Um, I'm super sensitive to the energies I give, um, what I put around myself. And that kind of okay. thing for me to stay in and a positive energy. That's cool. Now, I know you you have a degree, I think, in ministry. Yeah, so I have I my graduation was actually technically today, funny enough. Oh, congratulations. Uh, virtual graduation. But I graduated in May. Um okay. in the biblical studies in women's ministry. So all right. Now I used to pastor, okay? <laughs> I, I don't really talk about it much but how does that work because i know back in the day if you talked about some energy and and stuff like you're speaking and stuff that i believe in now people would pretty much shun you i know that um a lot of my audience they don't vibe with that they like you know it, it has to be strictly you know the thou the bible you know and i, and I know we're talking about you know, Taekwondo, but since we're on this, this is my subject right here. So speak to me about that. So I don't think they're, they're mutually exclusive. Um, and that's coming from my studies. Like, I think the Bible talks about certain energies. It just says it differently. Right. Um, spirit. Yeah. So we have a spiritual, like we can, we can feel each other's, uh, 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 an example of that is how, um, when Mary and, um, uh, Elizabeth met in the baby's job. Uh -huh. They felt each other's energy. The babies right, didn't, right. they didn't talk to each other, but they felt each other's energies. Um, but if you said that in a traditional church, you would be shunned. Are you a are you a millennial? I I'm on the cusp, so I'm not quite a millennial. Um, but I am. I don't call myself a. I'm not a church person, even though I believe in. Millennial. I believe in. I believe that we should go to church. There's reasons for it. Um, but I don't believe church is for uh, mostly for us to be fed. It's for us to work. Bible, I like you. Bible study, um, <laughs> personal time, having these relationships with certain people. That's when we learn. Like we learn through life um, in these small groups. But Sunday, we're supposed to be working. Okay. Um, and so I believe in that because we're supposed to be working because Sunday is for the unsaved people. It ain't for us saved people. We're supposed okay. to be working throughout the week. So on Sunday, we can go work and get more people to be saved. You um, know, I, I've been listening to a lot of millennials and Generation Zs in the last few days, and they are just like you and just like I am. And I know coming from the traditional church that that would not fly back then. It might fly now with you all and I actually just had to go back and read some research some things of my own to see what my conscious state was at a certain time. So I applaud you. So I love the fact that you spoke into existence that you would win a a medal for Taekwondo or you know at the Olympics. I think that's pretty cool and I think so many people need to use their words to create the life they want. Yeah, yeah, no, no, definitely. Um, so interesting enough, somebody said, I thought Sunday was the day of Sabbath. No, Sunday, Saturday, uh, Saturday is the day of Sabbath. Right. 
<laughs> Sunday is the day. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that. Well, but we're, we're about the day of rest, then we then then Saturday is that day that we're supposed to stop doing things. And essentially that's what uh and Sunday is when we're we're doing the problem is um we take we take different um scriptures, but we don't we don't take the whole context of it. We uh -huh. all we're gonna say that day of rest, we're also supposed to be doing this, uh, we're supposed to be uh um teaching people throughout the week, and we're supposed yeah. to be communing throughout the week. So we can't say we have a day, one day of rest, and we only go, we only do that stuff on Sunday. Like if, <laughs> if we don't say Sunday is our day of rest, then then Monday through Saturday we should be going out and teaching people about God and having people come yeah. in our house. We don't want people to come in our house. But back then, people came in their house. They invited you know, people and they fed them and they taught them. They fed them spiritually and 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 uh, mentally and physically. And so if we're gonna say Sunday is our rest day. Then, then we need to change the whole model. But you know what? Um, just being on the internet, a lot of people are getting ready to go back into that where, you know, they're having um, church homes or home churches, you know, where people gather and, you know, you go from house to house. So I think that's pretty cool, you know, for those who are into that. Um, so tell me your journey of going to the Olympics. Like, what was childhood like once you found out, hey, I have this gift, I have this talent that I can kind of kick some ass. So, <laughs> yeah, so after that, after that conversation with my mom, um, luckily I'm fortunate to have a, a mother and parents in general, uh, grandparents that um, they were willing to let me try everything. Um, so I my mom wanted me to be a ballerina, but I said I wanted to go to the Olympics. So instead okay. of forcing me to be a ballerina, my mom said, okay, I'm going to put you in sports. So I tried all the sports um, nice. and so from four to, to about eight and a half. I was trying all kinds of sports. Anything you can think of, I've probably tried it. Um, okay. And then my mom and my stepfather got were, were together and was about to get married. Um, and I was really little at eight, nine years old. I was I look like okay. a five year old. I was really, really little. And so okay. my stepfather got together and created a plan. I we almost made a PowerPoint presentation, like wow. to present to my mom why I should be in Taekwondo. And that was when karate was around, and I was going to be a grasshopper, and it's going to teach me self defense. Like we told her, all okay, the okay, all the boxes, and she was like, okay, well, I'm gonna let you do a summer program. Okay. And my mom calls it the summer program that never ended. <laughs> and so <laughs> I been doing this like two month summer program, and I never stopped. I just fell in love from day one. Um, wow. What did you fall in love with, though? It just was it was one of those things that it was just so natural. Have you ever for the first time ate a new food and you felt like this is a food you're supposed to always eat? Like, yeah, I think I feel like that with avocados. But then after I start gaining weight from eating too many of them, like I get mad. At the fact well, that I like I'm avocados. I'm obsessive with Taekwondo too, but we can get to that. <laughs> okay. Um, but um, at so it was just it was a natural thing for me. For I was winning really early. Um, I felt at home at Taekwondo. Like all the other sports I could do, I was good at, but I didn't feel at home. Like I didn't feel like that's where I was supposed to be. Taekwondo okay. always felt at home for me. Um, okay. To the point where like I was upset if I didn't get to go to. Most people train like two three times a week i went every day like if i didn't wow. get to work, i was upset like that's how my parents got me to do all the how they got me to do homework clean my room any because they said i'm not gonna take you to tech one if these things are not done okay so were you the only black girl um at the time sort of <laughs> okay okay so obviously you get along with other cultures yeah, so um, but it was really interesting. I had a really good balance of like this is my taekwondo world, but then I had a regular world. A lot of taekwondo okay. people don't have that, um, where their all their friends, all their relationships came in taekwondo. I didn't do that until I was like 18. I didn't start getting taekwondo friends. I was 17, 18, okay. getting, like real taekwondo friends. I had wow. my whole regular life. I had school, I was in after school programs, I had a job, I did all that stuff, and taekwondo was a separate world for me. So uh, how do you manage to do everything that you do plus Taekwondo? No clue. <laughs> okay. I yeah, I, I, I get that. that. I really don't because I literally um, in high school where it was it, where, when it was the most, I literally would wake up. I ran, lifted weights, jump roped, went to school, had an after school program or job. One of those okay. 
got home, did my homework, went to Taekwondo practice, went to sleep, and did it all again. Every other weekend was, was a Taekwondo tournament. I don't know how I did wow. it. You know what? I believe that God gives us grace to do the things that we do a lot of times. And then when we look back, we'd be like, how that happened? Or, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, did you have a boyfriend during this time? Because, okay, I would be afraid of you. That's probably how I did it. Social life wasn't a thing. Like, I have a way more social life now. But I always okay. know that. I was like, I have a goal. Like, I want to do this. And I can always go out later. And okay, I think it's the way that I did it was better. Like now I got the money to be able to go out and travel and do all the things that I can do. Versus okay. when I was younger, you know, a lot of people do it when they're younger, but we too broke to do anything anyways. Um, and so I didn't go to parties. Like my first, the first time anybody saw me in a dress was prom. And then really? my high school party was graduation night. I went to oh, a wow. I didn't go to parties. Like that wasn't what, I didn't have time. Okay, okay. But you didn't feel like you missed out or you were missing something as your friends or the people I you mean, knew? At times I did, but I was so focused on what I wanted to do. Like I knew that there was there was a sacrifice that had to be made. Uh, what sign are you? Aquarius. Aquarius a water sign. Okay. You know I in the like that. Oprah's Aquarius. Okay. Oh, I could believe that now. <laughs> oh. Do you know we're in the age of Aquarius now? Yes. Okay, so tell the audience about that. A lot of people don't know about the age of Aquarius. So it's, I, I'm not the best person to, to do it. And um, let me prereq with this. I am not a total like everything the zodiac size is true and all this. Okay. Stuff. I do believe that um, it just makes sense outside of like the moons and the stars. But if I'm born in January and you're born in January, we have similar situations. Like we all right, have, right. never so. had pool parties for our birthday. So uh -huh. we're, we're going to end up with similar traits. I just, I think that that's how it works more than it, than the moon and the stars and the, do that. Okay, okay. Uh, but the way the ages work is, it's over, I don't remember how many years. Um, and it kind of, so no, don't ask me, go ahead. <laughs> it kinda like the, the traits that they say are in people or in the world. Um, okay. It kind of makes sense with all the chaos that goes, because Aquarius is, to, the it's we're known for being like flighty and all over the place in uh -huh. the world. Weird things happen with us. Weird things are happening in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so but, you know, since we're shifting though, we're shifting into um, the feminine energy. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. So, who runs the world, girls? <laughs> Have you ever not been in the feminine energy? <laughs> right, right. But like people are starting to notice like this is about to take place in the earth, you know. So I think that's pretty cool. So tell me about prom night. So prom night was interesting. Um, it's funny because so I had and I've later on before I say this thing, I've later on talked to the guy and okay. had a conversation about what happened. So I was okay. talking to a guy. I wouldn't say dating. I was just, with my limited time, it was talking on the phone every once in a while. He okay. was going to go to prom with me. Um, and uh, two weeks before prom, he just disappears. And I'm just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Goes, did you? Like he ghosted you. He just disappears. <laughs> Turns out his brother like went to jail and it was a whole big thing. Like His brother was a drug dealer. and oh. He found me actually on a dating app, which is funny. And I think he's married now. But okay. uh, it was it was a whole thing, and he, he he like reached out to me and explained what happened. So he just like disappeared. So I was like, I don't have a date. And so my best friend found one of her ex boyfriends, and he he became my like my date. For oh, the that's but the nice. funny part about it is another guy that I was talking to at one point that she she was friends with him first. Okay, but I ended up talking to, him and then we stopped talking. She went with him, so we essentially went to prom. Oh wow, with each other's exes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The Interesting. Was, like, they only were there for pictures. Like they literally like we took pictures at the house, we and walked left. in, took pictures, and we didn't see each other for the rest of the night. Like wow. I really friend essentially. Like her those two went somewhere and we went somewhere and it wasn't it wasn't okay. a big deal. So but was, you know what? A lot of young ladies and a lot of young guys don't even take people to proms anymore. They go by this themselves. And I think that's pretty cool. 
yeah, to be yeah. honest. So, like, you hook back up at the end of the night. Did you go to the after prom? Like, the party well, after yeah, the prom? Yeah. After prom, anybody that is from Houston would know a place called Jillian's, which is now uh, David Buster's. We okay. rented out, and I don't know why the parents thought this was a good idea. We rented out the entire David Buster's. Now, okay. my, my graduating class was like 75 people. So this might be a it might be 120 kids in wow. all of the Buster. We 75 had people in your graduating class. Oh, yeah, it was small. It was tiny. Where did you go to school? I went to a, a magnet uh, high school. I went to Carver okay. Engineering Magnet High School, Engineering and Arts Magnet High School. Um, wow. So, uh, so it wasn't that You're many. <laughs> yes. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. A little bit. No, um, <laughs> no um, but my mom was actually one of the chaperones. But the way David Buster's is, it's like it's so many rooms. So all the parents were in the bowling alley, and the okay. kids were in the rest of David Buster's. Like we were in, it was like a DJ. They had like a back room. There's arcade. We were everywhere. I don't wow. Know. Uh, now I'm a little virgin kid and didn't, didn't didn't have a boyfriend at the time. So I didn't okay, know. sure, some negative things happened that oh. night because we had. Did anyone get pregnant? On prom night, not that I know of, but people, were, pregnancy was ran ramp, rampant. That was, I I was around the time when teen pregnancy was a big thing. <laughs> oh yeah, now I don't even hear about teen pregnancy. People are not even getting pregnant in their twenties anymore. I know people aren't even getting married to like thirty five, forty, and then having babies. And I'm like, oh my god, like yeah, people are not getting married to their. their so that's why everybody, it was a big shock when I got, ended up getting pregnant at 21 years old. I was like one of the first, because everybody was like, right. I got all kinds of stories. I, I love Okay, okay. All right. I was so, at 20, almost 21 years old and got pregnant. The first time? Uh -huh. Oh, well, I hear stories like that. Was that like shocking to you? Like someone didn't school you ahead of time? Like, girl, you need condoms or birth control? Or well, I wasn't, I wasn't dating or anything. Like I wasn't having sex like that wasn't a thing it just kind of it was somebody that i was good friends with and it was something okay. that happened like it wasn't was it a jump off no it was like we've been friends since i was like 11 and he was like eight so like he was literally okay. the kid that knocked on the door and said can Nia come out and wait a minute me. eight not so you were three years older than him yeah, like two and a half years his birthday is november i'm in january so okay like, so you you gotta tell me about that and we're going to get to the olympics too okay i promise you but i yeah. need to know like how this happened you guys are hanging out and then you're like let's have sex like how so it was it was one of those things that because we were friends and again i'm naive to i and I, I haven't had a boyfriend like that like so it was it wasn't so I didn't even know how this worked. <laughs> like, uh -huh. <laughs> and so we were friends, and me, him, and my cousin used to hang out every day. Okay. Like, I think we were in the pool one day, and my cousin was like, Y'all should just date. And so, like, we were like, we're friends, like, sure. And okay. so like, we called ourselves dating, but now in hindsight, we didn't really date. We just kept doing okay. what we were gonna do. And okay. I had just came from the Olympics, and I thought I was grown. And I'm okay. like, I don't need to be a virgin no more. I'm a whole Olympic silver medalist. Like, I don't need to be a virgin no more. And I okay. need to, to lose my virginity. And did it hurt? Because okay, <laughs> not. It, I mean, it kind of hurt at first, but it wasn't. It wasn't terrible. But it was. It wasn't good or bad. It was just like, oh, okay, that's what it is. Um, but you know uh, why I asked that because so many girls including myself thought it was going to be this phenomenal great experience and it really sucked right i mean especially if you're dating somebody that is just as experienced or lack thereof as you mm -hmm. neither one of us know what we're doing so it's not like a <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get it right the first time that's not how it works so but, did you I mean, at, at least practice like where it became good <laughs> well, <laughs> That just, I just jumped right in. And so um, and, and so that happened. And then I ended up moving right okay. after. So I didn't know I was pregnant till I was a good five months pregnant. Oh, wow. I went I went to world championships. I made national team. I was pregnant the whole time. Wow. No. I mean, did you have a cycle or? So I wasn't I didn't have normal cycles anyways. <laughs> Okay, like, that was a norm and, until I afterwards I got on birth control and then it regulated my cycle. But okay, um, before that, I just my whole life I hadn't had regular 
it like they would come and go. Like sometimes I would have them one week and then I'll have it the next week. Then I won't have it for months. So I didn't my in my brain. I mean, it was longer than normal, but okay. I never looked for sight. It just when it came, I was like, oh, it's here. Like I never like calculated it's about to come. That just that wasn't a thing that I, I didn't know my body back then. It was a whole bunch of things. Because again, <laughs> okay. my focus was I want to go to the Olympics. Like okay. I was thinking about dating and sex and getting educated in what sex means. Um, but I, part of it is what, and I, 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 when I talk to young ladies now, I try okay. to teach. Part of it is I didn't understand um, why that was a sin to have sex. Um, okay. I was always taught you can get pregnant, you can get uh, this, um, and you just shouldn't do it. I did not understand so okay. much. Um, and so the way that I describe it to the young ladies that I talk to is, it's kind of like mm -hmm. if you lose two things together, um, when you tear it apart, this piece is going to take a piece of your piece. And so this piece is walking around with a piece of you trying to fill other things with that piece. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to feel right. You're also okay. missing a piece. So a regular finger is not going to feel right. So right. this who has to detach that piece and I have to regrow my piece. Now, do you you teach them about the scientific aspect of it as well with the oxytocin? Because the oxytocin is the sticky glue that kind of bonds people together. I mean, I guess I teach it, but I don't teach it scientifically because okay. it's a biblical principle. If you think about from, from the beginning of time, sex was meant to bind you. It's a binder. Right. So that's what God made sex for. So he didn't make sex for it's a binding agent only if you do it right. It's a binding agent if you do it with Joe Smo or if you do it with your husband. But so did he create husband. did he create sex for procreation? Because most people would say for procreation as opposed to no, to he pull you together. It's both. Um, if okay. you read the scriptures, he created that. That's why they always talk about consummating your marriage, because mm -hmm. that's what bonds you physically. So we've, we've said we, we have these emotions, but physically we haven't been bonded. That's why I say I believe in energies. And that's one of the examples. Right, of right, we right. Bond our energies together. Okay. Um, but the problem is we're doing that without having the other part of it. So now we're connected to these people. I've actually had to break a soul tie. And that is one of the most painful things I've ever had to experience. And it wasn't, okay. it was a emotional, physical pain. And I don't, it's a weird thing to describe, but it hurt my feelings, literally. Like okay. I can feel my, I can feel it tearing, but it was my emotions and my spirit. But you know what? Um, a lot of, a lot of times people speak of soul ties and just in the physical, right? Um, just saying that they only come to fruition uh, with sex. Oh no, but no. I, right? I don't, right? I don't agree that that's the only way. I think that the more and more you spend time with someone and you develop. A, a kindred spirit or a friendship or whatever it is. I think soul ties are developed that way as well. But Absolutely. a lot of people might not agree with that. But that's just as real and the breaking of those soul ties, if that's what we're calling it, are just as painful. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's, it's appealing to our flesh. Uh, the sex is appealing to our flesh. So it's, it's tidying our flesh. Yeah, it feels so, good. Um, our flesh is probably the, the the easiest way for Satan to get to us. And so, okay. the, so I say all that to say, if I was, if I would had understood, and that's what all sin, uh, if I understood why God, like, I think we are often teach God is telling us not to do this, but not in the context of why God is telling us. We mm -hmm. just think God is punishing us. Um, mm -hmm. And if you look at the Ten Commandments, all 10 of those are put in place as protection for us. Okay. Because if I kill somebody, it does something to me. If I have sex outside of marriage, it does something to me. So God put these rules, not just because he just doesn't want us to do this. He says, don't do this because I know what will happen if you do. But <laughs> did you go ahead? Did you know there were like 400 and something commandments and that the purpose of all those commandments were to teach people that there is no perfection and you can't live by all these laws. They actually had commandments where they were telling you what time you can go to the bathroom and like things like that. So I think, but, you know, that was, that was, the Ten Commandments, yes. Say it again. That, that was man-made. That wasn't, so when they started doing those- But all the commandments are man-made. 
Well, I mean, that just, that that that's an argument of there's nowhere in the Bible that says that you're going to that, that you have these extra laws. It's just the <laughs> ten that that the Bible says God said I give you these. Now, okay. what was happening was um, just like we might do with our kids, we say I don't want them to touch the stove, so I'm going to tell them not to go in the kitchen. Okay. The real rule is not to touch the stove. But we tell you not to go in the kitchen because if you even if you go in the kitchen, you're not going to touch the stove. So what what the Jews were doing was they were trying to create buffer laws. And and so that if we do, so we have these laws that we oh we might break these anyways, even if we break them, we're not going to break the Ten Commandments. That was the, the reasoning behind it. It just got ridiculous. Okay. And so that's when I was like, now, I'm, OK, I'm going to come down here and do it myself because y'all tripping. <laughs> That's not okay. That's okay. Not okay. So, did, did you have the baby? Huh? Did you have the baby? Oh, my daughter? Yeah, she's 15 now. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, because we never got to the end. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I ended up finding out I was pregnant about five months pregnant. Um, and I was basically in my last trimester and had to figure okay. out how to go from this newly Olympian to now a mom. Um, and wow. I had a pretty I had real big support from my family and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and so for the first like two and a half years, I wasn't even living in Houston. She was here with my parents and I was living um, in California and then flying okay. back. Um, so I always say I was a baby daddy for a little bit. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I and I was a baby daddy for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but, but I think that's beautiful because you were still allowed to, I don't want to say do your thing, but continue to grow yeah, in what yeah. you wanted to become with the support of your family. I think that's beautiful. Yeah, um, yeah. Now, let's rewind. So you went to the Olympics between high school and your daughter. Correct. Okay, um, so tell me about that, that process. So after I graduated high school, um, I told you I went to a magnet school. Um, so I have an engineering seal. And so okay. with that, I kind of got um, some kind of hookups with um, schools, and I ended up getting a scholarship with Prairie View because Prairie View nice. has a program. So okay. I had that choice. I also scored pretty high on the ASVAP, so all the military people wanted me to do that and do a type wow. program. And okay. the Olympic Training Center um, called me and was like, "We want, we have a spot for you." Okay. Mind you, I'm an 18 year old person that said I wanted to win the Olympics at four. What yes. do you think? <laughs> about school. I didn't care about no military because they couldn't guarantee I was going to train. So I went to the Olympic Training Center. Um, nice. I went in 2002 um, as developmental. I hadn't made a national team at that point. Um, okay. Two Just two years later, I was Olympic caliber. So I wow. Went to, so the way the Olympic Training Center works, it's like developmental, junior caliber, senior caliber, Olympic caliber. Okay. Um, so these are just the levels that you can be in. I okay. basically went through that whole level in those two years um, and came out of nowhere. I was winning tournaments. Like I went to uh, uh, Pan, Pan Am Games is a, um, it's like a limp, it's a Pan American region Olympics. So, okay. region, so Asian has one, Europe has one, Pan Am has, they all have, each region has their own like Olympics. So it's just like the Olympics. You got a village, you get apparel, all the stuff you see in the Olympics, just the Oh man, game. like tell us about that. Like were you hype? Like what was so, going on with you? That was my very first national team. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, it's exciting, right? So I, and, and so somebody had to tell me what it was. Like I made the team and then somebody okay. told me what I just told y'all. I, right. I made the team and didn't know what I was made the team for. Like that's how <laughs> wet behind the ears I was. Um, and somebody had to tell me what it was. I was there with the person, the Everybody, it was like multiple Olympians, people that made national team 10 times, five times. And here wow. I am, the only rookie on the team. <laughs> nice. Were you still so tiny? Uh, yeah, I was little. I, I, okay. I, I, I fought 125. I was super little. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, but I mess around in metal. And so what that did was, so the way that the Olympic process goes, it depends on every year, but that year, um, the like world championships, Pan Ams, they had different tournaments that gave you different points. Okay. And according to the points, so let, let me let me circle back. The way the, it works is Taekwondo has eight divisions, eight girls, eight guys. Okay. But for the Olympics, you only can for Olympics and Pan, uh, Pan Am Games, they combine every two things. So there's only four girls, four guys divisions. 
Okay. But only two, only each country can only send two girls and two guys, but all okay. those people have to qualify. And so in order for them to go from that eight to that two, they have to have these point systems. And so different okay. tournaments give you different points. Well, me getting bronze put my division in the running to be my division and another division ended up going to the uh, being the, the selected people. Now we have to do the whole process of uh, qualifying the weight. So okay. although Taekwondo picked those two girl women, we still have to qualify the weight. And so that the way it worked that year is different now. Um, but the way it worked that year is there was a world qualifier and then a regional qual a Pan Am qualifier. Okay. If you weren't at the world qualifier, um, you qualify yourself in the country. Okay. If you weren't at the regional qualifier, you qualify the country, but not yourself. And so okay. we had tournaments to get to the qualifiers. For the world qualifier, I did not make weight. So I didn't even get to fight that tournament. So, okay. Oh, okay. okay, so making weight means that you have to be a certain weight. You were 125, so did you have right. to be like 120 or? No, I had to be 125. That was okay. Um, okay. I was like 130-ish. Okay. I was 125. Okay. Um, but I didn't make weight. The reason why I didn't make weight, well, I mean, that's the excuse. Um, it, the tournament was a, a one day. It was like right before Halloween. And then oh. somebody did an arbitration and they moved it like three weeks later. So, okay. so I had gained the weight. So I had already lost the weight and I gained it and I didn't make it back again. Like it just, okay. I just, I, I, I was eating too much candy. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And just assume <laughs> right? that was the one and only time I never made weight though. That didn't okay. Okay. On that one. Okay, uh, I was mad because it was the world qualifier. So that meant that if the person won, if they medal first, second, or third, like the Olympics is done for me for that year. Oh um, wow! So really? Not, luckily, they ended up not placing at the tournament, and we had another qualifier. That qualifier was in early January, um, and the way the qualifiers worked, it was like a round robin. Normally, it's like a bracket, but for this one, it was a round robin. That meant everybody fought everybody. Top two okay. seeds. Um, fought each other off in finals. Um, okay. My second fight, I fractured my foot <laughs> in this tournament. Oh, I had like wow. seven fights that day, but I didn't stop fighting. I fractured my foot and continued to fight. And it got worse and worse and worse throughout wow. the day. Okay. But I had number one seed, so that meant I only had to win once, and the other person had to win twice. Okay. Before that fight, I could not kick the target. But my best friend was like, you're here now. Like, suck it up. Like, this is your last chance. Suck it up. You're here. Get out there. I got right. out there, won the fight. So now I got to go qualify the weight, but not okay. myself. So I'm qualifying for the U.S., but not myself. But I okay. have a fractured foot still. And the tournament is in two weeks. <laughs> so what, what did you do? What happened? Were you able to go? Yes. Yeah, so I went. And I qualified the country. <laughs> Yay! And that took determination. Oh, absolutely. And it was, it was, it was, it was really hard. And I mean, this is, this is 2004. Like this is the year of the Olympics. This is January 2004. So wow. I qualified the weight. Then everybody else. So I qualified the weight, but no, the other girl does it. Okay. So now everybody is trying to get into this one division for all of the United States. Okay. So. Because I qualified the weight, they had a tournament with everybody else, and the winner of that tournament had to fight me, beat me twice. I just had to win once. Okay. Um, so they had that tournament, and it was that was brutal. I was glad I didn't have to fight that tournament. It was like 15 fights in one day. It was ridiculous. Wow. So the girl that got out of that tournament had to fight me. We fought um, fought um, in a tournament, um, and I ended up winning in overtime. That makes me a nice. Nice. So, okay. When, when you're fighting, right, what's going through your head? Because is it like a street fight? No, no. You... I don't know it's more of a fight than it is a street fight. So it's about points. So, uh, and again, it's changed a little bit now because it's been freaking 16 years. since. Okay. I've been. So rules have changed, but back then, uh, body shot was one point and face shot was two points. A punch was one point. Um, okay. to the body. And you're not allowed to do those things. No, that, that's what you're allowed to do. You're allowed to kick in the body, kick in the face, punch in the body. That's horrible. <laughs> and I was known for kicking in the face. Did you have like face protection on? 
A helmet. Oh no. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was, I, so the way I thought about it was heads are two points. So why waste my 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 energy on the body? So I I kicked in the head more than I did in the body. I was known for kicking oh. in the head. It was, okay. Was, and so um so I went in overtime for that for that tournament. Um, but with the way Taekwondo works is you have three two minute rounds and it's whoever gets the most points. If it's okay. tied at the end of that round, then you go into overtime, first point wins. So okay. that's how I won I won my Olympic spot in an overtime, like first point Okay, wins. okay, so, nice. Over dramatic for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Super close fight. Um, so then I'm on the Olympic team, and now I'm trying to mind you, I'm 20 years old, fresh 20. Just turned okay, 20. okay. How's the foot at this point? It's still fractured. So what they did was they told me it was a it was a sprain. Okay. But they treated it like a fracture. Now in hindsight, because I know now what uh -huh. it is, like <laughs> they gave me I, like I was in a boot. Like wow. they, they did everything. I did exercise, they did everything that you would do for a fractured foot, but they told okay. me because they knew that if I knew it was fractured, it was mental. Right. So they, okay. the that, that saw me knew me and was like, yeah, it's a sprain. So they just kept telling me it was a sprain. <laughs> it <was> definitely broken. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is crazy. It up and, and moved on. And I mean, at the Olympics, it didn't bother me that much. Okay. Um, but I mean. A lot of pain meds? Not even pain meds. We just iced and taped up real well. Like, it was just a matter of doing like just taking care of it. And, and I was used to pain. I have a high tolerance for pain too. Okay. Um, Carly yeah. said, did you ever suffer any head injuries? I actually have it. Um, I actually am one of the rare people that never got knocked out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so you can fight. Yeah. So I, I, I was a tactician. Um, so it, it was a chess game for me. Like my biggest people would talk about me was I wasn't ruthless enough. Like I would hit okay. you in the head for the points, but I wasn't trying to knock you out. I think I only knocked one person out ever. Um, and so I didn't sustain that because everything was a game. It was a chess game for me. So I didn't get okay. hit in the head a couple of times, but I, I didn't get hit in the head a lot because okay. it, it was such a chess game for me. And it was, I was, I was one of those boring people to fight. Um, okay. Because it was all about like, I'm going to do this so you can do that. So I can do this. Like that was okay. 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 So, okay, you get to the Olympics, you qualify, you get there, you got your gear, all that stuff. How does it feel to win the Olympics? So the funny part was, if you would have told me that I won the Olympics that year, I would have told you, what do you mean I lost? Because I got second. <laughs> okay, okay. Went through a, about, a, a depression for about six months and during that time, I got pregnant. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All that was that. So, because I told you at four, I said I wanted to win the Olympics. Right, right. And but, I thought I didn't do that. I get it now. I get it. I get it now. I understand. Okay, I was just going to ask the question. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm okay. Now I'm, I'm grown now, so I get it. But 20-year-old me was like, people would say, congratulations. I'm like, for what? I lost. Like, in my brain, I lost. And I lost. Oh, man. Like, I barely lost. So it was in my brain, like I failed at what I was trying to achieve. I did not understand okay. what it was because I was so wet behind the years. I didn't even know I got money for the medal. Like I was just going wow. to, like I just wanted to win the Olympics. Like that was really my motive. Okay. Um, okay. And so when I didn't get that, it was really, it was really hard on me because I didn't understand. Like I felt like I did everything that I needed to do and it, okay. I fell short. Um, yeah. And it took me years to really be able to like accept people saying congratulations or accept people saying you won the Olympics. Like still you saying you won the Olympics still in my head. Like I can, I'm grown so I can stop myself from saying I ain't win the Olympics, but okay. in my head, like, I'm like, I ain't win the Olympics. What you mean? <laughs> like, wow. Because you won it first place. Correct. Okay. So, you know, you remind me, I looked at, um, Debbie Allen's Netflix documentary today about these young ladies who train like all their lives to go on to higher things and dance mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just the pressure that they put on themselves because other people didn't put the pressure on them. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but just the pressure that you put yourself on yourself in to win is like, wow, it's, it's crazy. The mental, and I don't want to call it torment, but it kind of is torment when you don't get to that place that you feel like you should have. So, so somebody asked me, I was, um, and that's why I said earlier when I said that part of my story is I put too much into it. Um, yes. At one point, and I don't know where it happened because I always say Taekwondo saved my life. I, I was bullied okay. in middle school. Um, okay. I was, I was, I had depression in middle school. My, my mom didn't even know, like I was suicidal in middle school and Taekwondo okay. was the one thing that I was good at. So I was all like, well, I got Taekwondo, so I can't leave this earth. Like it saved my life. But at some wow. point it went from being that to being my God. Um, okay. I did not realize that until I lost it all. Um, and so, and so fast forwarding forward, now I'm this Olympian in 2008, I arguably got cheated out of the the, um, the next Olympics. Uh, it's a okay. whole universe. We had a court case. It was it was a whole thing. Um, wow. And so I literally went from they're giving me stipends. I got insurance. My identity is in being an Olympian. To now, okay. I don't get no money. I don't get no insurance. I, there's no. They're not paying for where I stay. They're not paying for my training. All right. that going like that. You know what the crazy thing with me communicating and working with athletes is that after they retire, just like you just described, it's all gone. The fame, the, you know, who row over them. And right. now right. they're trying to figure out who am I without football or who am I without basketball? And a lot of them end up like depressed and trying to figure it out. And I don't know if you had an agent, but that's where the agents actually need to come in early and kind of prepare these young men for life after the game. Yeah, so and I had a I went seek therapy. I believe in therapy 100%. Me I, too. I, I, I uh, went to, I've gone to therapy multiple times, different therapists for different okay. reasons. Um, I, so I, I did therapy and I also, I had such a foundation in the church okay. that although I didn't have a, much of a relationship with God, I just knew to run to the church. Like I didn't know what I was going to do there, but I literally like, I just started going to church. I started going to Bible studies. Um, I saw, I was, I was in like four minutes. I was in, I was in dance, choir. I was okay. in puberty. I did like, I was in like four or five ministries. Like I just signed up for everything. Because okay. I just something in me knew to run to God. Now okay. I didn't know what to do there, but I knew I didn't have anything else. And the only person that's gonna tell me what I need to do was God. Um, and okay. that's kind of how I fell into getting into seminary school because at one point I was doing maybe like five or six Bible studies in five or six churches. So I was going like Monday to this church, Tuesday to this church, Wednesday my church, Thursday to this church, Saturday so my church. You were trying to fill a void. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, gotcha. I wanted more understanding and I was trying to get it from a source that, that wasn't going to give it to me. So I was okay. asking all these deep questions and the pastors were like, go to school. <laughs> I kept getting told, you need to go. So I'm like, I don't need to go to school. I don't, like, I'm not trying okay. to be like, what are you talking about? Like, just tell me what I want to know. Because I'm um, asking deep, like, like questions about like worldview and all this stuff. They're like, just go to school. <laughs> okay, so, okay. So finally, do you do you think that part of them telling you to go to school was the fact that they couldn't answer your questions? No, they they knew that okay. I needed to get a deeper dive. They could answer the questions, but that wasn't the place to answer the question. Okay, it was, it was free. The church? <laughs> no, no. I mean, the quest, like in the setting of a Bible study, that's specifically for. Okay, okay. Like I'm asking these questions that the other 20 people don't know what I'm talking about. And so I'm taking this over here, talking about worldview and, and all these other things, theological things. And we, we talking about the basics, like why not to lie? And I'm like, worldview stuff. And they're like, can you go to school so you can really learn what you want to learn? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to write a paper on world. I, I had to write a 15-page paper and a 20-page paper on worldview. 
Okay, okay. <laughs> so I don't know. Are you reading this? I believe that's how all of us go to church being uh, hurt and lost. Uh, we go looking for it. Yeah, you're right, Carly. Yeah. I totally agree with you. We, we're all searching for something. Yeah, and I think know, we have to find but, the right setting. We have to write the right setting. I, what I didn't do was I wasn't in the right setting for the questions that I was asking. I mean, we have to find the right setting. Okay. And the funny part is we do it in other things. Like, we're not asking about physics in, in mm -hmm. great science. If we start asking about physics, they're going to send us to a physics class. Like, right. <laughs> they're not going to do and teach us physics in first grade science. And right, right. But a lot of these Bible studies are first grade science, first grade math. And so when we start okay. asking other questions, now I do agree that the church should find these other places or have these spaces for us to learn in a deeper level, but there's okay. also schools to learn that. And it's, it's, all right. us. it's on us to, to learn those things. We're looking for the church to give us things that even the Bible tells us that we need to learn for ourselves. Study yourself to be approved. There right. is material. In this day and age, there's so many things that we can look up on our own and that we That's can really study and that we can really reach out and do stuff and read about. I didn't know about finances. I started getting books about finances. Right, right, I right, right. I didn't, I'm a, I, although my, I wish my mom would have taught me, she, okay. she, did, she didn't. So now... Am I going to just say, oh, she should have taught me. And now I don't know because she don't. No, I'm going to go find the materials for that. I'm going to find the books for that. I'm going okay, to find okay. I'm gonna look on YouTube for those things. And then I'm going to gonna look it up in, in a book and I'm going to try it out. I think that's what right. people can go to school. I think we think going to seminary school means you're going to be a preacher. That's not what it means. Like you can no, literally. It just means you want to learn. You can literally take a, there's a, there's a book called, I mean, a class called Bible study method that I think every Christian should take. Okay. You, it, it, at my college, they have it, but they have them in all kinds. It's called Bible, Bible Study Method, and it just teaches you how to read the Bible for yourself. That's all it does. Okay. So okay. We, okay. We have, to, we have to be more proactive in doing that and not expecting the church, who are people well, themselves, do all that. I think we need to be more proactive, period, in every aspect of our lives. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, um, it's very unfortunate that we don't want to do research or we don't want to pay for the knowledge or for the education, um, mm -hmm. but we'll depend on someone and what they're saying. Um, let's see, ladies. Okay, so, uh, Carlene says, thanks for a wonderful thank conversation. You, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Carlene. Really appreciate. Um, but yeah, people don't want to pay for knowledge and for wisdom and um uh, education and it's sad, but then there are people who pay for it. Yeah, and I mean, there's so, so many. Where, where is your journey? Yeah, there's there's a lot of programs right. pay for. Where's your pay for a lot of myself the first couple of years. Like, there's so many scholarships, especially and now. Mm, yeah, especially for women. Especially for Black women. Yeah, inspire <laughs> women. <pay for. laughs> Inspire Women is a group that paid basically paid for like my first like year, and then I got I ended up getting grants and all kinds of stuff. I didn't pay for a whole bunch of stuff for years. Wow, that's beautiful. Now, what is your degree in? Like, I know you have a degree in biblical studies, but do you have another degree? I know you're into um, the science field. No, so, so I have a degree in women's ministry. So it's a special women's okay. ministry. Um, so basically, it's like Bible methods, Bible knowledge okay. kind of degree, um, but it's also leadership. Um, so learning about how to be a leader, um, how to counsel women, all that stuff was in, um, okay. in the studies that I have. My job has nothing to do with that. Um, I work okay. for people. <laughs> oh, so do you have your own nonprofit or anything? No, uh, I uh, I had my Taekwondo program for a while. What I was doing was I was teaching Taekwondo classes, but then I also, under my business, was doing um, speeches. Um, so okay. I, would go, I would do motivational speeches. I have a, a, a saying, and I'm supposed to be writing a book. We'll see if this happens. Um, but okay. um, and it I, will, I, right? I do, well, it I'm, will, right? It's supposed to be coming out uh, June 10th, 2021. <laughs> okay. Get the writing, sister. Push your book on. Um, so 
so that's the problem. So right now I'm just kind of filtering out my story in the book, but okay. and I don't really have a central theme. But what I was speaking about was um, I have this concept called live like a champion through Bacho. And Bacho is kind of a catchphrase from Taekwondo. Um, and it okay. stands for believe, associate, choose, hone, and obtain. And what okay. happened was one of the things I did in therapy was go back and look at my journey to being uh, okay. an Olympian. Okay. And I realized that you know that's the title, right? <laughs> My journey to being an Olympian. Well, yeah, that could be a title. <laughs> but uh, I looked at it. Like, I'm like, like looking for a pen real quick. <laughs> but what I realized was those same steps are the same steps any successful person in the world has taken. So right. first, they had to believe that they could do it. Then they uh -huh. had to appreciate the thing that they can do it in. Then they had uh -huh. to do the work. Then they had to hone in and focus on doing that work. Then they had to uh -huh. actually look at it and grab it at the end. That uh -huh. is the whether you're an Olympian, the teacher of the year, a businesswoman, everybody <laughs> the same steps if they're successful. And so I really correlated that because we, we glorify uh, athletes, but these same steps is, is success across the board. You don't have to be an athlete to follow those steps. I inboxed you that title. <laughs> it was bothering me. Like, if I name it, that I'm have to put you in the acknowledgement. That's all right, girl. Do it. Just do it. You know, I, I'll accept it. <laughs> but man, I think that's going to be pretty cool. And yes, we definitely have to believe, mm -hmm. and we also have to decide. You know, um, I think the first decision that a lot of us are afraid of is to decide. Yep. And then it's hard for people to believe after they decide, <laughs> you know, so, but you decided at four and that's the amazing thing. Yeah. And I, I, I'm so glad that you just throw it out in the wind, like. Right. She could have easily been like, I can imagine, I, I might not have been, like, she's 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 a very optimistic woman, because I don't know if my okay. point told me I want to win the Olympics, I'd be like, okay. And then, Would you? Yeah. I'd be like, girl, yes, you can. I mean, I probably would say, yes, you can, but I don't know if I would have been as proactive in making that happen as my mom okay. would. And I don't right. think a lot of people would. Like, she was, she literally put me, especially considering that she didn't want me to do it anyways. <laughs> Okay. And she still did it anyway. She said, I'm going to put you in these sports. Uh, I don't want you to get hurt, but I'm going to let you do it anyways. Right? I love it. And now, she allowed you... me to, to live out my, and she allowed my sister to live totally different, her totally different dream outside of mine. Like, I we, think that's cool. Yeah. At four years old, she believed me. And I don't know if I believe myself, like even looking at 30 something year old myself, like okay. a four year old, like. Think about a four-year-old. I, th I think I think you I think you would have. Now, <laughs> do you do you still work out? Uh, yeah. I'm looking at the Mars. I can see the you know the toning still. Yeah, I work out ish. <laughs> I'm big on working out. I'm like luckier than I was. <laughs> but <it's> okay. Right. <laughs> do you have any more children? No, I just have the one. Okay, yeah, and what is she? <laughs> okay, and what is she doing with her life? So right now, she she's really into art um, and, and languages. So right now, she um, so with the art, I don't know why, but she had, she's natural at art, but she don't want to do it. She just wants to do it for fun. So okay. I leave her alone about it. But when it comes to languages, even when she was little, she used to watch like TV and other languages. She really loves languages and catches languages really. So wow. I think we're going to be in in uh, China somewhere. Uh, by the time she's grown, um, but she wants to be an exchange student. And everything like she goes, she learns like Korean and stuff on her own. Like she goes and finds apps and learns languages on her own. I think that's cool. So she might be like in intellectual studies one day, or you yeah, know, so making she wheel. She wants to do like like uh, international law. I love it. Totally yeah. different than mom. One hundred percent. She wears makeup and does all. She got, she, she got a whole like nail kit, like she like with the light and everything. She got a whole neck nail kit. She was doing her nails yesterday. I think that's pretty cool. Like I really wish that I was more girly girl, like growing up, but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. But you know, but this has been phenomenal. This has been fun. 
Where can people reach you? So they can follow me on uh, my Facebook. That's Nia Nicole Abdallah. Um, my Instagram, the real Nia Nicole Abdallah. And I said that because I got uh, other Olympian friends that have to have the real and the original. So I wanted it okay. to. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to have to follow you on IG. I'm yeah, going to follow you as soon as we're done. It's Miss Niobe on Twitter. So M I S S N I O B E. Um, now, now, Leah, for branding purposes, I, your I, name tried should... to, I tried to change it. I had a, a, a Nia Abdallah one, and nobody went to that one. And so I just had to. Really? Go. Yeah, I tried it. Oh, man, because now I'm like, I got to look here. I got to look there. You're going to have to inbox me. I can't keep up. Yeah, so most of them, you can, if you look up my name, you can you can find me on most of them. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, and you can find me on most of them. And Twitter is probably not a one that you, I don't, I, Twitter is just my Instagram put. Okay. Me. So, got you, <laughs> so got you. Got you. My Twitter is not going to, it's not going to be much different than my Instagram and my Facebook. All right. So if you could tell our listening audience, especially our young people, anything, what would you tell them? Um, I would tell them that, that they really, the first step of anything is really to have confidence in who you are, um, and understand who you are, whether it's you just knowing that, or you seeking counseling, or you getting a mentor, but understanding who you are is step one in anything that you want to do. Um, so really understanding that even when it comes to dating, if you don't know who you are, um, it's going to create problems, uh, everywhere else. So I would say before anything, you do anything else, really understand deeply who you are, who your flaws are, what, what's good, what's bad, what's indifferent about you. Um, and then everything else can will fall into place. And you know what? I was looking for hearts like on Instagram. I could hit the heart thing and all the things come up when you were saying <laughs> that because <laughs> I so agree with you that we all need to know who we are. So I want to thank you. Don't go anywhere, but I want to thank you um, for gracing us with your presence, sharing your journey to the Olympics and winning, you know, <laughs> and, and, and still being great and thriving in women's ministry and doing what you're doing, being a successful mom as well. So hold on tight. I'm going to take you off screen and I'm going to just do my little ending. So thank you so much. <laughs> so everyone wasn't that phenomenal you know Nia I really like her I love the fact that her energy is so friendly and so welcoming and I really enjoyed her journey what I enjoyed most was not the fact that she um, fractured her foot but she fractured her foot and she kept going until she received what she wanted, which was going to the Olympics and winning. How many of us have that tenacity to keep going when it hurts, when it's painful, and when we just don't know? So kudos to Nia for that, but thank you for tuning in on a Saturday evening. Normally it's on a Friday night, but I'm glad that you're here. If you haven't received 134 Reasons, You Can't Find a Man, this is a book for anyone. And if you are a parent and you have grown children, that's definitely the book. That book will get them the hell out your house. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in on a Saturday night. This has been phenomenal. Thank you, Nia. And we will definitely see you again. Have a blessed weekend, everybody.